Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Salesperson. This is Rohit and today I am going to discuss about Winter24 dynamic component in LWC feature. If you are new in this channel, so please subscribe the channel and turn on the bell icon for more updates. And also watch this video until end. If you want to learn something new and also don't skip any part of this video, otherwise you will not get any kind of you know guidance about this dynamic component. So please watch this video until end if you want to learn something new. So let's get started without any further delay. So first of all, I will tell you what is dynamic component and how to configure it, how to create it and how to use it in our work. It's a very good concept and it's a very good component. So you always use the latest things in the Salesforce. So let me explain to you what is dynamic component. So dynamic component instantiation can help you to avoid loading large module that you don't always need. Also, you can instantiate a component instance when the underlying component constructor is not known until runtime. So dynamic import is a convenient solution to make a component more customization. However, it is not always the best solution because of the runtime performance overhead. It is introduced the, you know, introduces, so don't overuse it. Okay, so how to create this dynamic component let me show you here and how to configure it so very simple and very useful so to instantiate a dynamic component you have to configure your xml file using new you know capabilities and lightning underscore underscore dynamic component you have to use this one so how to do that let me show you here so let me open my vs code so now i have created two components one is dynamic component and one is demo component. So under the demo component, this is a simple component here. You can see only connecting callback. I am using here lifecycle hooks of the LWC. And under the connecting callback, I'm just printing console.log. And under the HTML, I don't have anything for the HTML. So I want to configure this component inside my dynamic component. And based on the dynamic component, we can show this component. All right. So under the JS, first of all, you have to do one thing. You can take any local property or something like that, like component name. Okay, I have created this connecting callback and this connected callback, uh, I just import my demo component using C slash something like that. This is the dynamic importing and then this is the callback function. So you can see dot dan and it's taking this parameter default colon ctor, right? It can be anything in your case, but right now I'm using this one. So after that, this dot component name. So this is the property in the top. And based on this property, I am printing this component name. And if this component name equal to equal to demo, because right now we have this demo component, based on this component, I'm just printing here, demo component is loaded successfully like that. And if this demo component is not available or something happen in your component is error hand, like is occurred some errors. So that time, uh, that errors catch by this catch block under this catch block i'm just printing console.log like error importing component err right if anything is happened in this component okay so this is the js file let me open the html under the html you have to do one thing uh, just create the div tag or it's, it's up to you but this is the mandatory things like lwc colon component lwc colon is and then component name so based on this condition, we are using this dynamic component. And after that, you have to configure your, you know, this uh, metadata file. So I'm just expose this true and always keep in your mind these things. If you are using dynamic component, so it will available only, you know, some few APIs like 57 to 59 right now. So right now I'm using 59 here. So this is the latest one. So that's why you can see this component eligible here. Okay, so after that, you can see I just expose this component inside record page, app page, home page. And after that, this is the very most important uh, lines, right? So you have to consider that if you are using dynamic component. So you have to use like capabilities. Under the capabilities, we have capability. And then you have to use this lightning underscore underscore dynamic component. And then close the capability. So this is the configure file. You have to configure your, you know, dynamic component otherwise you will get some error without these things right so once you've done it 
under this HTML we already discussed and also this JS and once you configure everything just deploy this first component this is demo and then deploy your dynamic component and once you deploy just let me open my org and let's see the output so just under the home here in the sales application I just imported my component inside here after assistant and let me open the console here and let me refresh this page and once you refresh it in the console you will be see my output okay so once you refresh it now just let me show you the output of this you know uh, dynamic component so scroll up and now please focus in this line here uh, this is the output of this component so let's say my component name is demo here you can see the demo right and demo component is loaded successfully it is coming from demo component and this is a component name in my dynamic component so you can consider these things and based on this component name you can hide and so or you can apply any business logic based on your requirement and at at the time of runtime right so please keep in your mind these things so here you can see the output right and also once you open it and uh, suppose that you can see the demo component is loaded right and demo and also let me show you another things and here let's say I want to make it some error let's say this component is not available so let me deploy it and let's see the output so once you make it your component is not visible because of this component is not available in my project directory and I, I didn't create it this component like demo one and this time we will see the some error so let me refresh this page again and let's see the error so just refresh this page in the console you will be see the error okay so once you refresh it in the console let's see uh, which type of error we have so once you refresh it just scroll up scroll up here so here you can see the error like error import component error definition module c demo one was not found so this is the error coming from and that dynamic component so that component is not available like demo one that's why you can see the error right if you have like this component so always remove this one and error importing component also you can find out let me copy it and in the browser once we have this one like this so let me find out this one now you immediately you can see error importing component and this 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 something like that this is the details of this error right so let me change this component back to my original component and let me deploy again and let's see this time so let me deploy it and once you deploy it now you have to do again you have to refresh it and this time will will not see any kind of error in the page so just refresh it and here in the console just come down now you can see demo component name and demo component is loaded here you can see the output so guys this is all about dynamic component if you learn something new in this component so please like share comments and please turn on the bell icon for more updates so you never miss any kind of update from my site till then bye bye take care see ya thank you for watching guys